Last time we started our detail page a little bit better. So in this one, I'm going to go ahead and, and submit an email and create a subscriber in our database. So we're going to be hitting this endpoint here called uh, subscribers. So we're going to be making a post request to the subscribers route or subscribers endpoint. And we're going to need to find the email that the user provides and also the campaign that they are subscribing to. So whenever we click on a campaign, so here when I click on build an Uber clone, this campaign details or the ID also is available in the detail page. And we're going to be using that. So now let's go ahead and see how we can pick the email whenever a user enters it. And also we can handle the submission. So our submission, we are going to keep it simple. We're actually going to use HTML5 validation. So, so where we have the input for the email, the type is already email. But now you can see that if we come here, I'm just going to remove this, go afresh and submit. You can see that it doesn't check. It just submits. So what we want is to actually prevent it if the user hasn't entered the email. So you can specify a required attribute. So now if you come and try to submit, you can see it, it doesn't rate us and it wants us to fill the field. Obviously on the back end, we have the validation to make sure that the email is going to be there and it's going to be valid. So here, if we enter the, the text, you see we still have to enter a valid one and we can't submit before we enter a valid one. So that's just going to do the validation for us. So no worries. Let's handle how to pick the email whenever a user enters it. So we're gonna, we are going to have to keep some local state to be able to, to persist what the user is entering. So here I'm just going to have a, a const. So we're going to have email, set email. So we're going to use the use state hook to keep track of our email state. And we're going to start out as a, we're going to start out our email as empty. So whenever a user changes something, so whenever a user enters something in the email, we're going to have an on change. So on change. So the on change, you're going to have a function to handle the on change. So we'll have an event here. Now, whenever a user enters something there, we can pick the newest value from event target value. And we want to update our email like this. So we're going to say set email to event target value. Okay, so now I'm going to go here and console log the email just to see if our own change is working. So let's console log it. Uh, so it's we need to import use state. So we're gonna go here and import use state. It's a named export. So so now if you come here, let's get the console. I'm going to expand this one a little bit. So here I'm going to start typing there something. So I'm going to do test at gmail.com and you can see that our email is being logged here. So meaning we are able to capture it. So now let's go ahead and handle when a user submits. So we're going to have a function. So whenever a user submits, the form calls an on submit and we need to provide a handler for it. So here we're going to have on submit and we are just going to have a function called on submit. I'm just going to call it handle on submit and let's create this function. So I'm going to go top here and have const on submit equals. So this gets the event. So whenever the user, the form is being submitted by default, it is going to be making a get request. So you can see it's going to do something like this. So we don't want it to behave that way. So we can give, use this event to prevent the default behavior for when a form is submitted. So once that happens, then we can go ahead and handle this our way. So what we want is to basically make a request and save this email to our backend. So the endpoint you're going to hit is this. It's called, uh, so here I'm just going to try to submit this. So the endpoint is called slash API slash subscribers. So I'm just going to get such subscribers because we already have, we already have this in an environment, the base URL in an environment variable. So here, what you can do, is since you're using fetch, you can first define our options. So these are gonna def are going to be request options. So we're gonna ha have a method of posts. So method post. So here now we can have a fetch. So fetch takes in the URL. So we're gonna use this syntax here to bring in a dynamic URL from the environment and to also concatenate there the subscribers. So we can do process 
dot env dot next public base URL. I hope that's how we called it. We'll check, and then we want to concatenate there, so we can put this, put their subscribers like this. Okay, so the first one is where we want to make the request to. Then we can specify the options. So we can specify our options there. Now, since we are going to be making a post request, we need to send some data to the server, of course. So here you can specify the body. So since our backend accepts JSON, we need to create a JSON string and send that instead of our JavaScript object that's going to have an email and also the campaign. So here we'll have JSON, stringify. So what do we want to stringify? We want to stringify the email and also the campaign. So at this point in time, our campaign is going to be data.id data.id and uh, for the email we would have to specify it like this but since the the key and the value have the same names then we can just keep one of them it's going to behave similarly another thing we can specify is the headers so things like the content type but let's first try this so whenever we make a fetch we'll get a promise so we can do dot then so the first dot then is sent from an initial request that is not actually the one that has what the, the server responded to. So what we want to do with the first response is to actually transform it to JSON. And then the data is going to be in another dot then. So we can chain another dot then. So here we can expect to have a response from the server. And we're just going to console log it for now. So let's console log response. And also if there are any errors, let's go ahead and handle them. So we can do dot catch. So let's do error. Let's console them for now. And now if we come back to our web page. So I'm just going to enter an email and click. Notice that by default, we are not able to make the request. We are not able to make the post request. And uh, we get the error saying fail to fetch. They are telling us that the, the request has been blocked by COAS policy. We didn't specify the access control origin. So what you can do here is specify some specific, is specify some headers. So I'm going to go here and have headers. So for these headers, we'll specify the content type to be application JSON. So what you can do here is we're going to go to the server and enable requests coming from this local host port 3000. So we're going to be using a module called Django core headers. So Django core's headers and uh, install it. So we're just going to do pip install Django core headers. So we'll go to our backend. So this is our Python server. I'm going to stop it and install this. So let's go ahead and include this in our installed apps. And we're going to be seeing how to use it as we go. So let's include it here. Then the next thing I'm going to need to do is add its middleware. So we are encouraged to add the middleware before the common middleware. So just gonna come here and get it right here. Now the next thing I'm gonna need to do is specify allowed origins. So I'm gonna copy this and uh, anywhere around here, I will specify cores allowed origins. So we want port 3000 to connect to our server. So also we can just use the domain instead of the IP. And we, once we deploy the front end, we're going to have to update this to also accept the front end. But for now, let's remove this. So let's go back to our, our front end and try again. So here, I'm going to try making the same request. Notice that we, we update this. Notice that our record is saved on the server. So we get it sent back to us. So since both these servers are on localhost, you can see it's pretty fast. But sometimes we may have a delay. So we want to disable the button when we are loading and also show a success message once we submit successfully. So how do we do that? So, so in the front end, we are going to have to maintain some state for the form submission. So we're going to have const, I'm going to have one called submitted. Set is submitted. It's going to start out as false, as you may imagine. Let's also have the loading state. So when we are submitting set, so const submitting, set is submitting. We also start out as false. So now here, once we start to save, we, are, we so once we start to make the call, so before the fetch itself, we can set is submitting to true. 
and whenever we finish submitting or we get an error we can update it to we can update the is submitting by the way there is a finery so we can call we can also catch finery so this is called regardless of if things were successful or not so you can see here this is called when the promise is settled by being rejected or fulfilled so whatever happens this gets called after so here we can just set is submitting what is that how do you call it set is submitting yeah so here we set we set is submitting to false again and also we want to handle we also want to handle is submitted so once so you can see that by default it's gonna be false now whenever we submit we'll change that to true so we're gonna go here in the dot then so we don't wanna look here we are sure it's gonna work just gonna get a block here and write some code there so we're gonna set it submitted here to true so once we submit successfully then we want to give the user a thank you message so where we have the form right here we are only gonna show the right contents only when the user has not submitted so here we're just gonna have if not is submitted so if we have not submitted then we are gonna go ahead and, and show the form but if we have submitted so here we can have an or so let's have a div here so here we can just have a thank you message so right now i'm gonna so here i'm gonna have a class name this is gonna be thank you and inside here we basically want to show an icon so here i have react icons up so we want to show a check icon just so a user sees the green so we're gonna have to install react icons so npm install react icons so i'm going to be using yarn of course so i guess i'll switch to my front end server and do yarn add react icons inside our thank you div we're just going to have an icon and, and also the text that says thank you so div class name equals those dots icon and the icon is going to go there then let's also have another div that's going to have the text the success text or the thank you text so here let's have thank you for your subscription so now that we have this then we can spin up our server again but we need to import the icons and also use the icons so react icons comes with uh, very many icon sets so you can choose from very many so it's likely that you're always going to find the icon you want from this so what we want to do is we want to import the check one so we're going to import it from font awesome so whenever you're importing icons you want to import from a specific icon set so you can see there's font awesome anti-design game icons hero icons icon moon ionic icons material i can name but a few <laughs> so here let's get the the import so we want to import from font font awesome so react icons slash fa and the one we want is gonna be the fa check circle so fa check that one all right and we can use it as a regular react component so down here we can just render the component all right so we can specify props like size so size let's set that one to 17 and we're gonna see how that would look let's also give it a color so the color is gonna be a green one so green so let's go ahead and see what we have we're gonna go back here it's gonna refresh so we have some typos i believe so it's submitted oh we called it submitted i'm gonna change that to submitted and also whenever we are submitting we want to disable the the button so we want to disable the submit submit button so if you are submitting then we want to say please wait and also disable the button so we can say disabled equals when we are submitting all right so coming back here it's gonna refresh let's try to submit this click submit you can see it submits and we get a thank you message so let's style the thank you a little bit better we want to flex it left and right give it a background of white and maybe make some things a little bit bigger but you can see you can get where we, we are going right now so let's see how we group this so we have a div thank you so we're gonna go to our detail mode due before the 
before the, the media queries. Let's have thank you. Let's make it bigger and flex this. So we're gonna, so let's give it a height. Let's do something like 400 pixels with it 100% of the container. Then let's have display flex just so they are left and right. Let's center everything, just for content center. Align item center. I love doing that. Anyway, so you this goes in the center. We don't we don't want it to be so big. So let's make it 200. Alright, looks good. So for the for the message, if we check here, you can see the message. Let's change this one to message. Want to give it some padding left. So dot message. Padding left 12 pixels and you, let's save here. You can see we get that. So let's give the background. So the whole layout, let's give it a background. So background color to white. And you can see that. So for the message, let's give it a get dark color. So color, I believe it's quite. I believe it's, it's the height is a bit is a bit large, but you get the gist. Let's give it some border radius, and yeah. So also let's give it some margin on the right because it's kind of stuck there. So margin, actually margin on the left, twenty four pixels. Let's see what one does, and yeah. Anyway, so this is how it looks. I'm going to refresh here just so we get an, a new flow. So you come here, choose an email, click subscribe. We get the subscription success. So that's going to do it for now. So in the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to deploy the applications. So thanks guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you in the next video.